Well, I'm surprised nobody's questioned me about the Timberjack skitter. You see how it says Timberjack on the window too? That's an 848H. How does that happen? Well, you'll notice that it, the green is a little different color and it's got a yellow grill. So it definitely has the Timberjack color and color scheme. But it says Timberjack on it. But yet it has a John Deere number. John Deere bought out Timberjack back in, I think it was around 2000, 2001. And <laughs> Dean, I think it, it just about made you cry because is like Chevy buying out Ford for you so it was quite a quite a thing that happened but I gotta tell you the story behind I guess the story is that there were down in Texas the skitter came from Texas I believe this is what I remember uh, there's one there was one dealership in Texas that was allowed to keep branding their skitters as Timberjack Instead of them saying deer on them. There was a period there where deer uh, Called some of their skitters like Timberjack 560s even though they were 748s So yeah, that's why it's called a Timberjack because deer let them one dealership down in Texas because nobody down in Texas would buy a deer <laughs> but they but they'd buy a timber a deer with a timberjack name on it kind of crazy kind of foolish and uh, I should tell you the story how we came across this it's it's uh I think it's funny so the story behind this skitter is I was oh there's a pile they limbed early this afternoon brought the 300 in here you can't really see the pile there the pile they put over there anyway back to the skitter i i got a phone call from my equipment broker and he was wondering if i had anything to or we had anything to sell or we were looking for anything and i i said not really but maybe a skitter if you come across a good buy on a skitter and he rattled off some 748 that had a lot of hours on it and I said wow that's it's not really something we're interested in and he said well you're you're probably not interested in this skitter that just I just uh, found out about this morning the skitter down in Texas an 848H but it's just about new well, I don't think you're interested in that I said well <laughs> tell me about it and he, he said it was two years old with 1,500 hours on it. And uh, <laughs> he told me about what they were asking for it. And so I, I got pretty interested in it. I talked to Dean and Jeff about it. And it's getting too doggone dark. Well, the, the long story short is by the end of the day, we made an offer on it. We lowballed him, or I guess I lowballed him, and they agreed to meet in the middle. And then I talked them into paying for the shipping <laughs> from Texas. It was a pipeline outfit. They went up to somewhere by New York and put a pipeline in, and it was used there. And it was it was like brand new. the The seat was still the, the interior of the skitter was beautiful oh i don't know where i'm going with this oh, I, I this is the funny part of the story is so we it, it all happened so fast and i if anybody that knows me knows that i don't i'm not impulsive and but this all happened fast and and uh Called the bank, told them to transfer or wire the money down to this guy. And then all of a sudden I got panicky. I was like, wait a minute, we're wiring, <laughs> you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars to somebody we've never met, although we're going through a broker that we'd used before to sell equipment. 
And uh, so I, I started to panic. I'm like, how do we know this is this skitter even exists? And Dean was getting mad at me. He's like, don't don't ruin the deal. Don't ruin the deal. This is too good a deal. And I was like, well, that's that's why I think there's something wrong. It was too good a deal. <laughs> So yeah, I was panicky, and when it when it finally showed up at the shop, I was cutting, and uh, I was so nervous about it, I asked the guy that was dropping the skitter off to take a picture of it next to the shop to prove to me that it existed. <laughs> so he did. He sent me a picture of it, which was a big relief. But the bad part about it was it came from Texas and this was deer season, so it was the middle of November. So you know it had straight number two fuel in it. So I had to beeline it to the shop to get some number one fuel in it or some fuel additive so it wouldn't gel up on us because it was fairly cold. Oh man, I don't like how dark it got on me so fast. Um yeah anyway i was pleasantly surprised at how nice a shape it was in uh we had we had a heck of a time with it starting though when we first got it couldn't figure out what was wrong and then come to find out it didn't have a hydraulic dump on it when you're cranking because down in texas it doesn't get cold and you don't need that but we needed it up here and it was a brutal cold winter that winter and i i kept trying to wait for a warm day to install that dump kit you gotta flip the cab over and put in some hoses and put a valve in the bottom of the hydraulic tank and anyway i ended up doing it on a saturday afternoon in the woods because it was the warmest it had been in a couple weeks it got up to above zero and i <laughs> garrett and i worked on it for a few hours we got it in and it's a great starting machine ever since. Well, anyway, that was a lot better story in my head. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Have a great day.